Hi everyone. So, how are you guys doing? I hope all is well, yeah? Today's lecture is all about federalism system, the second part of chapter 3 that we drag from last week. If last week you have learned about Malaysian constitution and mostly about its main features, today we are going to talk about how does the constitution being implemented, meaning to say, in what way that it is being used and governed. So it is used by the Malaysian government who practices a federalism style of governing. Malaysian federalism governs the country based on the guideline from the Malaysian constitution. All right, let's proceed to our lesson for today. All right, let's move on to our lesson. As usual, yeah, class, first thing first, before we start with anything, I mean lesson, we should know what's the concept of the thing that we want to discuss further. So, for this week, we are going to look at federalism in Malaysia. So, what is federalism? So, the concept of federalism. Federalism is a method of government that allows two or more entities to share control over the same geographic region. The power is divided between the national government and other government units. The terms federalism and confederalism both have a root in the Latin word fodus, meaning treaty, pact, or covenant. Their common meaning until the late 18th century was a simple league or intergovernmental relationship among sovereign states based upon a treaty. So, federalism is a treaty. Eh? Meaning to say, federalism is a political system in which government power and responsibility is divided into two, yeah? between a federal legislature and a number of state or provincial legislatures. It defines the division of governmental functions and the financial relationships between different levels of government. In most instances of federalism, there is a single national government, often referred to as the federal government, which exercises its particular powers across the whole country. In addition, there are multiple regional governments, often referred to as provincial or state governments, which exercise their powers within their particular region. In a simple understanding, federalism is a system of government where there is a clear demarcation of power between two levels of government. Unlike in a unitary state, each level has final authority and can be self-governing in some area. Let's take a look at the next slide. In Malaysia, this means the power is divided between our federal government, which is in Putrajaya, in Kuala Lumpur, and our state in Sabah, and or sometimes called local governments in such Kota Kinabalu Municipal Council. Each person in Malaysia is subject to the laws of that city, states, and our federal government. The formation of the Federation of Malaysia is unique because not all member states, as it is usually in a federal system, have the same powers. In a sense, the relaxation given to Sabah and Sarawak is a condition of the establishment of the Federation of Malaysia. The central government's relationship with state governments is sometimes good and sometimes cold. Okay, for the relationship with, between the state and the federal government, we will discuss this about this shortly. Yeah? I mean, um, I'm going to give you exercise related to the relationship between state and federal government later on. Um, okay, next one. Federal Government of Malaysia, this is basic things, yeah? Every one of you should know of these things already. So, Malaysian Federal Government is the common government of Malaysia, comprising the 13 states 
and one federal territory Kuala Lumpur and also Labuan. So we have two federal territories here. Headed by Yang Di Pertuan Agong as the head of state. Meanwhile, Prime Minister as the head of government. Please remember, yeah, Yang Di Pertuan Agong is the head of state. Meanwhile, her Prime Minister is the head of government. Federal government shares the national sovereignty with other trading states government. The federal government administrative missionary is a combination of three major components set out by the constitution, the federal executive, legislative, and also the judicial body. Next, let's move on to the historical chronology of Malaysian federalism. So from the charts here, uh, I have divided the chronology for Malaysian federalism into three years. The pre-independence period, the independence period, and also post-independence period. Okay, let's talk about each one. Yeah? The first one, pre-independence federalism. The earliest from... Form, the earliest form, yeah, the earliest form of federalism in Malaysia was said to be the Negeri Sembilan's loose arrangements of nine different localities under the Yam Tuan Besar. The office of the Yam Tuan was seen as the unifying symbol, but such arrangement was not qualified to be called federal system under the modern definition of federalism. However, as of fact, we can say that the Malaysian federalism was unofficially begun with the traditional federation of Negeri Sembilan. This is according to Wu Min Aun in 1999. Yeah? Okay. The system was formally introduced by British in 1895 under the Federated Malay States or FMS which unite four states. Uh, which are Perak, Selangor, Negeri Sembilan, and Pahang to replace the resident system, okay, according to Jayum A. Jawan in 2008. It was also not a federation in true sense, but it is just a mechanism used by British for the implementation of their policy in the states through the state councils chaired by the respective sultans. Yeah? The model of the federal system at that time was focusing on a strong central government that had sovereign power over its surrounding units. And this was the reason for the Unfederated Malay States, which is UFMAs, in deciding not to join this federation. This is according to Muhammad Kamil Awang in 1998. And then Malayan Union, which is MU, which was introduced in 1946, even did not bring the idea of federalism had some influence yeah, on the running of the system in Malaysia. Malay Malayan Union was an attempt by the British to introduce the unitary system. Unfortunately, this idea was tremendously opposed by the Malay rulers. You knew already this story, right? And then the majority of the Malay community. But some of the characteristics of federation today have their roots in Malayan Union format. This includes the provision which allow the federal government to assume control over the states, which indicates that the power lies on the central government. Okay. Next one, which is uh, next one is followed by federalism in 1957 after gaining its independence in 1957. How about the post-independence federalism? Then after independence in 1957, the constitution of 1957 retained the federal nature of Tanah Melayu. During this time, there was no bargaining between the states and federal government regarding the distribution of powers and revenues due to war on communist insurgency and the already weakened position of the states. The Writ Commission was set up, okay, if you still remember the Writ Commission, we discussed about this earlier on last week. Okay, the Commission was set up to make recommendations for the establishment of a strong central government with the states and settlements enjoying a measure of autonomy and with the consultation machinery between the two levels of government. 
This is according to Mohammad Aris Haji Osman in 1983. Yeah? The commission was concerned more with how to resolve the conflict that may arise under the federal arrangement and they recommended for the establishment of the consultative machinery such as the National Finance Council. Thus, the commission was of the opinion to give the federal authorities with upper hand. The Reed Commission continued with the 1948 constitutional framework, but the state's right and interest have been safeguarded in the form of Senate's power on constitutional amendments. The system was still maintained under the Federal Constitution of Malaysia after the formation of Malaysia in 1963. After Sabah, Sarawak and Singapore joined the Federation, the name was changed from the Federation of Malaya to Federation of Malaysia, and even Singapore was asked to leave in 1965. The agreement in 1963 remained where both Sabah and Sarawak had been given special positions under the federal arrangement. Next one, let's take a look at the features of Malaysian federalism. Alright class, for the first point, it has two forms of government, in example, state or provincial level with each one having their own power or jurisdiction. Having their own power means that a political arrangement exists in which power is divided between the federal and state governments in clearly defined terms with state governments exercising those powers accorded to them without interference from the federal government. Exercising power without interference is the key word here. Yeah? For point number two, it can only be done with the consent of the small territory or the state wanting to merge with each other and hand over some sovereignty of the state power to the central authorities with guarantee by the constitution and still retain their identity. So in order to make federalism a legitimate government, two parts of the governments in which in the Malaysian context, the state or the local and the central governments have an agreement with each other. This agreement is seen as a consent in which the state government is willing to pass over some portions of power or authority to the federal government to take in charge. So the key word here is willing to pass over some power. Yeah? Number three, there is a division of authority based on a written constitution on the function of the government which a government has independent power over at least one area of the matter. So class, number three explains that each government has a major authority or is dominant towards certain criteria based on what is written in the constitution. So Malaysian constitution has three shared lists based on the constitution, which are the federal list, the state list, and the concurrent list. According to this point, we take the federal government as an, an example. The federal government has a dominant power over some components. The practice shown in the federal list from the constitution, yeah? The components are the national defense, labor and social security, medicine and health, education, to name a few. We are going to go further on this later on, yeah? Okay, point number four, five, six, and seven. Number four, every government has a high power or status quo on the field it is allocated to. So this point is actually related to point number three, in which they have a dominant power or veto towards the field they are in charge of. Number five, the two governments have a direct relationship with their people and have their legitimacy verified. Their people means the people under them, yeah? the people that follow their instructions. For point number five, what matters here is the word legitimacy. It just means that each government, either the federal government or the state government, has its own sovereignty. Sovereignty is the pinpoint here. 
Number six, any governments cannot alter this relationship stated in the consent of the constitution on its own. This is very straightforward, yeah? I bet you understand this very well. And then number seven, a territorial government exists on its own right and power. So there is a boundary yeah, between the federal government and the state government. So uh, this is what does it mean for point number seven. And it's quite straightforward as well. So I bet I don't need to explain it further. Okay, now let's take a look at arguments. So there are arguments exist here yeah, related to federalism in Malaysia or in general. So what is the success of federalism? What are all the points related to it? So number one, there is a written constitution. So this written constitution guarantees each region has its own autonomous power. So this means that there is a balance of power, yeah? So it is considered as success for federalism system. And then number two, the need for mutual defense due to the security threats often faced by the country. Number three, the willingness of federation to work together economically, especially on national development. Number four, there is a wise leadership and negotiable force to ensure the smooth and orderly operation of the system. And number five, Social cultural equality such as language, race, and religion. How about the failure of federalism? Okay, so number one, non conformity factor can occur in two conditions. In example, between two levels of government, vertical, and between the states themselves, horizontally. Examples of incompatibilities exist between India and Pakistan in terms of religious differences resulting in the breakup of these two regions. Second one, language and cultural issues. Problems will be complicated when the language and culture of one's state is very dominant in federation. And then number three, geographical factors. Jamaica's example came out of the Trinidad Alliance in 1956. In the case of West Pakistan and East Pakistan in Bangladesh, due to a distance of 1,000 miles. Number four, ethnic diversity. Conflict will exist when the power of government is dominated by one race. This dominance of power will cause the state in the federation to lose confidence and trust in the federal government and encourage them to demand independence independently. For example, Yugoslavia territorial division in 1990, a dispute between Serbia and Croatia. And then number five, power imbalances will cause the states not to be satisfied and create protests and demands. Examples, Jamaica is more powerful than Trinidad central government. One. Point number six, imbalance economic development between regions occurs when the developed region feels unhappy and loses its economic benefits to the backward region. To avoid this partnership, some states want to be free because they want to safeguard their economic interest. Nigeria's example, yeah, oil-rich eastern Nigeria claims its right from federal government due to imbalanced development received from the federal. Okay, the last topic, the relationship between federal and the state government. In Malaysia, the division power between the federal government and the state government is stipulated in the provisions of the federal constitution. So there are three lists of lists in the ninth schedule of the federal constitution which distribute this power, namely list one. It is called the federal list, contains 27 jurisdictions in the constitution. And then list two, it is called the state list. It contains 12 jurisdictions in the constitution. And list three, 
which is the concurrent list, contains 18 jurisdictions in the Constitution. Okay, in Malay, federal list is Senarai Persekutuan, state list Senarai Negeri, and then concurrent list Senarai Persama. So maybe we take a look at a little bit of the federal list here. I have prepared the list for you, yeah? I'm going to give you later on. So the first one, external affairs. Number two, related to defense of the federation, internal security, civil and criminal law and procedure and, and the administration of justice. Federal citizenship and naturalizations, including aliens, the missionary of government, finance, trade, commerce and industry, shipping, navigation and fisheries. So fisheries is under federal list, yeah? Communications and transport, federal works and power, service, inquiries and research, education, medicine and health. Labor and Social Security, Welfare of the Aborigines, the Orang Asli, Professional Occupations under the those specifically enumerated, Holidays other than State Holidays, Standard of Time, Unincorporated, unincorporated Societies, Control of Agricultural Pest, Protection against such pest and prevention of plant diseases. Newspaper, publications, publishers, printing and printing presses. Censorship. Subject to item 5F of the state list. Theaters, cinemas, cinematograph films, places of public amusement. Federal Housing and Improvement Trust and Cooperative Societies. Federal and Constitution. Federal Constitution and State Constitution. So the Federation is required to guarantee the sovereignty of the Malay Sultans in their respective states. Each state, irrespective of whether it has a Sultan as its ruler, has its own state constitution, but for uniformity, all state constitutions must have a standard set of essential provisions, CR 71 and the 8th schedule of the Federal Constitution. So this provides for the establishment of a state legislative assembly consisting of the ruler and democratically elected members which sits for a maximum of 5 years. Okay class, that's all for today. It's a very short lecture for today. But don't worry, I have more work for you. So till then, please take care and stay safe yeah, as usual.